Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Elite Mechanics. My name is Hassan, and today we're going to be doing a video about the factory software for BMW, Rolls Royce, and Mini Cooper. It's called Ista Plus. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so the first thing is I use something called an ICOM. Uh, these are readily available. You can buy them from the dealer, or you can buy them on eBay. There's two kinds. So there's genuine, like this one. This is a genuine BMW Group ICOM, and there's clones that are from China. They're about less than half the price. But they all work. I wouldn't use a clone if you're going to do programming, but uh, if you're just using it to scan fault memory and do service functions, the clone's fine. But if you want a full setup for programming, coding, then I would definitely recommend buying a genuine unit. But uh, it's pretty basic. It's got a nice long cable. I'll show you guys how I like to set them up. I usually set them on the mirror with the window down if I'm just reading faults. When you're programming, you got to set up a little bit different. I'll probably do a video in the future on that. But this is what you need right here. And it's got a um, serial number if it's genuine. The fake ones all have the same serial number for the most part. Um, it's got three ports. So you have your uh, cat cable port for your programming. You have your USB. And you have your most ring, which is for the entertainment. It's all fiber optic. But those are the ports that are on it. Uh, I paid, I want to say, I can't remember to be totally honest, but I think I paid like $700 for it, something like that. But it's pretty robust. It's got um, rubber ends so that if you drop it or you know it can take an impact, I don't recommend dropping it. But you know shit happens in the shop, whatever. Today we're going to be using this on this Rolls Royce Ghost. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a subscription or a bootleg version of Ista Plus on your laptop. So I will show you guys how to use Ista Plus. Um, as far as how I have mine set up, mine's wireless. I have it on my network. Uh, but you can use these hardwired as well as if you were programming. The only time I hardwire mine is when I'm doing programming, but when I'm not doing programming, I do not use a hardware. I use it wirelessly because it's more convenient. I can roll my cart around and uh, be, you know, over here while I'm doing work on this car over here. So it's just convenience, really, more than anything. Quick update on my car. The uh, engine's back in. Everything's back together. It runs. I started it up yesterday. But she's all complete now, so I need to get on the dyno. Make sure everything's good, but I thought I'd give you guys an update because I've been telling you about my ride. I will be doing a video in the future uh, just about this car and showing everything that's gone into it. But enough on that, just giving you guys a quick update on it. I'm very happy that it's alive again. So the first step before we hook up the ISTA is to hook up a battery charger. I have this one right here. It's the DSR Schumacher. And then I like to use moving blankets like from Harbor Freight, I don't know, they're like four bucks. They make excellent fender covers so you lay the cables over and don't hit the paintwork of the car. The terminal posts are right here. That's the positive. Your ground would be right here by the VIN. So we're going to put your ground. And on BMWs and Minis, it's kind of obvious. They're not going to be the same exact locations, but you're going to see this cover for the, the positive and you'll see the ground post. Uh, like on the Phantoms, the ground's down in here, so they're in different spots. So let's go ahead and get this battery charger hooked up, and we'll get going on this stuff. Alright, you can see I got my leads hooked up. Got 13.4 volts. So now we're ready to turn the ignition on and start communicating with the vehicle. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to open the ignition. Okay, and turn the lights off. We don't want any consumers on. Air conditioning. Focus, keep our focus. Turn all that off. So take off all the consumers possible. Now we want to open up Ista Group. So we'll go ahead and double click on that. And let that open. So you can see here we have ISTA opened up, ready to go. Next step is to plug in our ICOM. So let's take our ICOM and plug it in. And I'll show you guys where I like to set it and how I like to have it set up when I'm uh, working on the cars and reading the fault memory. 
So let me get it set up and I'll show you how it looks. So I like to set the ICOM on the mirror. As you can see, we have wireless, the WLAN is my wireless, it's saying it's connected. So now we go into our ISTA here and we are going to go to operations and read out vehicle data and complete identification is down in the corner go ahead and hit that and it's going to search for my icon and there it is it has my name and it shows that it's free and available and it shows the vehicle voltage so we're going to go ahead and click on that and set up connection Okay, so right now it's communicating, it's pulling up all the options. You're going to see the chassis code, the factory integration with the last programming that it had and the programming that it came with from the factory. It'll be listed on here. I'll show you the interior um, upholstery number for what color combo it has, the engine. It'll show mileage, production date, all of that, the paint code, and the latest roadmap. There's a lot of information on the screen. The next screen that we're going to see is going to be called the control screen, the control tree screen. So what that is, and I'll show you as it loads in, it's going to show all the modules on the car, each computer to break it down, and um, they're color coded. So if the module is green, that means there's no faults in that module. If it's yellow, that means that module has a fault inside. And if it's red, it means the module is dead completely and not communicating with any of the other modules on board. Most of this runs on a CAN network and FlexRay. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but basically what it means is it's bi-directional information. Each module sends a signal, and then it has a signal coming back. So they're, it's like talking to your friends in a network, but you guys are like linked together. I guess that's the way to think about it. But there's also what I like to call the traffic controller, which is the center gateway module and he kind of directs traffic and sends different signals to different places. Here's the control tree showing all the modules. You can see we have some that are, are uh, gold or yellow, meaning there's faults in those modules. On this car it has two DMEs, DME1 and DME2. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. DME1 is for one bank of the V12 and DME2 is for the second bank. Each computer or DME digital motor electronics controls one side of the V12 so it shows our total fault memory here down in the corner is 12 you can see it right here we have 12 faults so let's go ahead and go to display fault memory which is in the right corner I had when I clicked it and it shows that we have exhaust gas after cat too lean we have a mixture control problem a misfire on cylinder one, three, two, several cylinders. We also have a Vanos exhaust control fault, position not reached. Charging pressure, which is boost, too low. And AC compressor shut down due to failure of DME enabled, meaning the DME was no longer commanding it. So we have quite a few, few faults here. But the good news is all of them are unknown and none of them are current. So you see it says existent here. It also shows us the mileage at when all this happened. And it looks like most of these happened together. Uh, as far as at least the misfires go. These are all related because they happened together. And then the rest of these were at different times based off mileage. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do what I call a smooth running test to see what's going on with these misfires. Because these are on different banks. So we will go back to vehicle information, which shows our control tree. We're going to call up the functions on the DME. So we're going to click it so it's outlined. Go down to the bottom and hit call ECU functions. And it'll bring us a menu. And we're going to go to diagnosis scan, motor operating values, operational smoothness values. That's the one we want, operational smoothness values. And we're going to monitor cylinder one through six. And I'm going to go ahead and start the car and then we're going to watch the smoothness and I'll explain to you what we're looking for.
Okay, so we're going to hit read state so it starts showing us live data. And right now we're seeing all zeros, which is really good. That means it's running really smooth. There's no indiscrepancies between cylinders. If you see a one, a two, a three, I mean, you got a really rough running cylinder, but zero is what we're looking for. So bank one looks pretty good right now. Let's go ahead and get out of this. We're gonna close this. So now we're gonna do the same thing for bank two. We're gonna highlight it just like we did on bank one. Call up ECU functions. We're gonna go to diagnostic, diagnostic, diagnosis scan, excuse me. Operational smoothness values. And we're gonna watch bank two, make sure it's smooth. Read state, and again, all zeros. So, looks like whatever happened isn't happening now. Um, more than likely, the owner of the vehicle probably ran it absolutely empty on fuel, and that's what caused those misfire faults. It's generally what happens. Uh, people can't be bothered to put gas in their car, so they run it to the very end. Um, another option that we have too is uh, we can check fuel content as far as like what kind of grade fuel they've been using. So if you have a car that's been knocking and has you know knock codes or misfire and the owner swears up and down, they only put 91 in their twin turbo V12, I can actually go in and check that and see what the last 500 Phillips, what fuel grade they've been using. Uh, you know, it's just good to know because people lie uh, or they don't remember or whatever the reason may be. That's something that you know we can do. The car stores so much information, we can see so many different things. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to display fault memory. Again, nothing is existent right now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and delete the fault memory. And then we're going to road test and see if anything comes back. Uh, probably not. Probably just ran it really low on fuel. But it is possible something might come back. AC is working fine. So um, it could have had a low voltage. Uh, problem where you know the battery was almost dead you never know what happened this is pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it um, I've been using it for quite a few years now so I've gotten pretty good with it but I highly recommend using the factory software if you're doing a lot of BMW Mini or Rolls Royce in your shop uh, I don't do a lot of Mercedes so I use my Autel mostly for that but when it comes to these cars which I do a lot of Rolls Royce it's a must-have you gotta have this that's just my opinion I guess but I highly recommend it but yeah that was it I just want to show you guys how to use ISTA what's required to use ISTA so you need the ICOM and you're gonna also need a battery stabilizer I know this video is kind of short sorry I don't have much I can film right now I'm trying to catch up but I figured a lot of people are curious about, you know, using ISTA and how difficult it really is. It's not that difficult. It takes time to get good at. But um, it's definitely a tool worth having, like I said, if you're doing a lot of this. Or even if you just own a uh, BMW or a Mini or a Rolls Royce. I mean, if you own a Rolls Royce, more than likely you're paying someone to do it for you. But if you're an enthusiast, uh, you can get the bootleg stuff and the clones at an affordable price. And if you're a professional in the industry, then I highly recommend buying a subscription to ISTA Plus, buying a genuine ICOM, and uh, improving your work set and your skill set. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I look forward to coming out with more excellent videos and content for you guys. I'll see you guys very soon.